sitting with Marley, just is a nice relaxed, chill day. So I've actually got um, Pippin's old saddle here, which no longer fits her. So my Lola has very kindly posted it down to me so I can fit it on Marley. Because if it benefits him, I've got a nice new saddle for Marley. And if not, I can just sell it and use the money to put towards another saddle for Marley. So let's get going with the fitting. Now before we get started, I'm gonna just really quickly say, quick disclaimer, I am not a professional saddle fitter. I'm not trained to fit saddles. Um, and everything I'm gonna talk about now is what I've learned when I was doing my degree back at university. So I do have some saddle fitting knowledge about the basic fit of a saddle, but I would always recommend getting a properly qualified saddle fitter to fit your saddles for you. So before I get into fitting the saddle, I'm gonna just quickly talk about different parts of the saddle. So I'm gonna be going through some different bits and pieces. So if you guys don't really know horses, I'll just quickly run through the different parts of the saddle that I'm gonna be talking about. So firstly, this is a saddle. So saddle is what you use when you're horse riding, that you put on their backs. You don't have to use them. Some people choose to ride without them and use different things, but generally a saddle is needed. So the front of the saddle is called the pommel and the back of the saddle is called the cantle. So I'll be referring to those during the fit. I'll also be talking about the panels, which are these parts on the side of the saddle, which are the bits that directly touch your horse when you're riding. And lastly, you've got the gullet, which is this part here, which again, I'll be mentioning during the fitting. As well as the saddle, we're going to need a girth. So this is a girth. It's essentially a big belt that you use to keep the saddle on your horse's back when you're riding. So a very important piece of equipment for us to use today. So first up, you want to make sure your horse is tied up and comfortable and happy. So I've got Marley tied up here with our lovely new sage head collar from the Muir. And he's got a little halo here just to keep him a bit busy so he's not too distracted and being too in my way. But you are anyway. Oh. I mean, I've also got hair, he's distracted, but still. This, this is Marley. So we're gonna just try to ignore the fact that I've got a great big horse slick stain on my arm because I was trying to save his head collar earlier. So I was cleaning his nose and what did he do? He slobbed on me. So now I'm covered. But Sage is clean, so it's okay. Right, let's fit the saddle. saddle cloth underneath it as you want to see how the saddle fits directly on the horse's back. So I'm going to place the saddle on Marley's back now without anything underneath it. You want to make sure you place the saddle correctly. If you're not sure where it's placed, I tend to place it further forward on the wither and then slide it gently into place. It tends to sit nicely where it's meant to be. Check the length of the saddle, you need to make sure that the saddle doesn't pass the horse's last rib. So you can roughly have a look at where the last rib is. You tend to know because you can feel where the rib cage bends round on their body. So I'm going to quickly check for Marley's last rib and make sure that the saddle isn't too long. between their neck and their back technically. Some horses have a high wither, so there's a bit of a bump, whereas someone like Marley is not that noticeable. To check the clearance, we use our hands to see how much space is between the wither and the top of the saddle. You should be able to get three or four fingers in the front of your saddle, which will signify that you've got good clearance. If you've got too much room, then your saddle is too wide and it can move while you're riding and potentially slip to the side. And if you can't get that many fingers in, then it's too narrow, which means it's too tight and it could pinch your horse's shoulders while you're riding. Yes, we've got four fingers, so that is perfect. So that's great. So next up, we're going to check spinal clearance. And to do this, we just look for daylight. Really simply, we look down the middle of the saddle, just here, to make sure we can see some light. This means that the saddle isn't too close to his spine and won't be pinching it. The saddle shouldn't actually touch the spine, it should just sit either side of him. So to make sure it's doing that, we're going to look down the back and make sure we can see some light. All good. It's a lot easier to do that if your horse's head is down and sometimes when the head's up, the neck is blocking some of the light. So if you have someone on hand, you can get them just to hold your horse's head down for you. Luckily, Marley is currently hoovering hay off the floor, which makes it a lot easier for me. 
So let's start, we're going to check the relationship of the pommel to the cantle. So the pommel is the front of the saddle and the cantle is the back. So some saddles have a higher cantle to a pommel, for example in dressage saddles, which encourage you to have a deeper seat, whereas others like jumping saddles have a more balanced relationship because you spend a lot of time out of the saddle so the seat is a bit shallower. This is a general purpose saddle, so the pommel should be slightly lower than the cantle, but not so dramatic as it is in a dressage saddle as the seat doesn't need to be deep. To do this, you just imagine a straight line going from your pommel to your cantle. And I want there to be a slight angle, but again, not too much of an angle because that means that the seat is too deep. You've also got to check that this seat is parallel to the ground. So again, just looking at it from afar, seeing if the seat here is parallel and looks like it's parallel to the floor. To do this, it's best to have your horse on even ground. Mine is a little bit wonky donkey here at the minute, but from what I can see, it looks nice and parallel to me. So lastly, I'm going to check the balance of the saddle. So with a poorly balanced saddle, you'll find that when you're riding, you can either tip forwards or tip backwards in the saddle. Sometimes it's not about you, it's about whether your saddle fits or not. This can be easily adjusted depending on which girth straps you use. So underneath the saddle flap on your saddle, you've got some girth straps here. So some people commonly use the first and the third, but to affect the balance and change how the balance of the saddle fits, you can use a combination of all three. Before it comes to girthing, you can check the balance of your saddle by gently pressing on the cantle and the pommel. The saddle shouldn't move if it's correctly balanced, but if it's incorrectly balanced, you might either tip forwards or backwards. So as you can see there, the saddle is well balanced and sits nicely on Marley's back. Lastly, I'm going to put the girth on and see how this affects the fit of the saddle. So now that the girth is on and there's more pressure on the saddle, we're going to quickly check the panels again to make sure that there's enough clearance in the wither and especially make sure there's no pressure on Marley's shoulders, which will restrict his movement in this saddle. To do this, again, I'm going to use my hand to check the clearance on the wither here. We've still got a nice three fingers. It's actually gone down from four to three, but we've still got three, which is the minimum that we need, which is great. So he's got wither clearance. And now I'm going to run my hands down the sides of the panels here along his shoulders, and I should be able to get my hands down there. It should be a little bit snug, but not tight. Tight means that it's going to restrict his movement, but snug means that it's sitting really nicely on his shoulders. So it is a little bit tight going down here, but I'm really lucky that this saddle is actually adjustable, so all I need to do is get a wider gullet to make it a little bit wider for him. That makes a lot of sense because Pippin had a bit more of a wither than Marley, so her saddle would have been narrower, whereas Marley can be a little bit wider. For continuity's sake, guys, I just asked the dog for a cuddle forgetting that he's a mod monster. So that's why I've got a beautiful Loki high five on my chest. <laughs> so I'm fairly happy with the fit of the saddle so far. So next time I'm going to lunge Marley in it to make sure that the saddle's not restricting his movement in any way. Right, so I've just brought Marley up to the top school because there's some people riding in both the schools at the moment, which is great because now we've got this little lunging place, it means I can, I can still work him even when there's lessons on, which is fantastic. So first I'm just going to ask him to walk round, so nothing to walk. He just always has to <laughs> do his own thing. Marley, walk. There we go. Just walk round for now, so I'm just looking at how the saddle's moving with him. Walk on. There's not too much movement in it. Like I've said, I am not a saddle fitter, so in my opinion, I do think it's moving slightly too much, but he has got quite big movement. And this could be something that will change once there's obviously a bit more weight in the saddle with a rider. This could change when he's got a saddle pad on, so there's a bit more between him and the saddle. Walk on! He's so nosy. Marley. So sadly my camera died part way through filming the lunging, so I haven't got any footage of Marley trotting or cantering. 
but I essentially did the exact same thing that I'm doing now. So just making sure that the saddle isn't restricting his movement at all in any way, making sure that he looks nice and comfortable, especially through his legs, his movement and across his back and just making sure that the saddle moves quite nicely with him, isn't too unstable. So the next thing I would do would be to get a rider on board, but as I've mentioned, it's a little bit too narrow on his shoulders, which will cause it to pinch a little bit, especially with a rider on board. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just look out for a wider gullet for this saddle. And once I have changed the gullet, then I'll be more than happy to put a rider on board. But for now and for today, all we're gonna be doing in it is just a little bit of lunging. So after all of those steps, the next thing I'd do would be to get a rider on board, just to make sure that the saddle still fits with the addition of the rider's weight. Now because it's still quite a tight fit, I'm not going to do that today because it will pinch him a little bit. And I've also got to consider that once the saddle pad is underneath it, it'll be even tighter. So I need to make sure that he's going to be nice and comfortable in the saddle as well as me. So my lunch session actually got a little bit spicy guys, and I actually forgot to record an outro. So this is your outro, I'm really sorry. A massive thank you for watching guys, I hope you found this informative and enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like, a comment and if you really want to see some more from me, don't forget to hit subscribe so you get a notification every single time I post. But for now, please enjoy these bloopers from this vlog and we hope to see you next time. Bye! Here he is, the Hoover. I'm gonna nickname you Dyson. Nama 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 nama. I have my finger back then because I do need it back. Oh, okay, we're gonna wait then.